In this video, we're going to work on some problems that relate cell potential and Gibbs free energy together. So let's start with this problem. What is the value of delta G or Gibbs free energy in a reaction shown below? So the formula that you need is this equation. Delta G naught is equal to negative N times Faraday's constant times the cell potential. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate N. And what do you think N is? In this problem? Well, we need to look at the overall balance reaction and we need to separate it into half reactions. So let's start with the oxidation half reaction. As zinc turns into zinc 2 plus to balance the charge, we need to add two electrons to the right. In the case for copper, we need to add two electrons to the left to balance it. So the number of electrons in a balanced chemical reaction is n. So in this example, n is 2 moles of electrons. Now let's plug in everything that we have. So we have negative n, where n is 2 moles of electrons, and then Faraday's constant is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And the cell potential is 1.1 volts. Now you need to know that 1 volt is 1 joule per coulomb. A joule is the unit of energy and work. Coulomb is the unit of charge. So 1 volt relates potential energy to charge. It's 1 joule per coulomb. So we have 1.1 volts or 1.1 joules per coulomb. And so we can see that the unit moles of electrons will cancel, and the unit coulombs will cancel. And so we're going to get delta G in joules. So negative 2 times 96,485 times 1.1. That's equal to negative 212,267 joules. Now let's convert that to kilojoules. One kilojoule is equal to a thousand joules. And so we can see that these units will cancel. And so this is going to be approximately negative 212.267, if you want to add that, kilojoules. And so that's the answer for the problem. So this correlates to answer choice C. Now here's a question for you. For a spontaneous chemical reaction, what is the sign of the cell potential and also delta G? And what if the reaction is non-spontaneous? And also if it's at equilibrium. For a spontaneous reaction, delta G is negative, And it's positive if the reaction is non-spontaneous in the forward direction. If it's at equilibrium, delta G is zero. Now we know that delta G is equal to negative NFE. So because of the negative sign, delta G and the cell potential will have opposite signs. So if delta G is negative, the cell potential will be positive. If delta G is positive, the cell potential will be negative. And if delta G is zero, the cell potential is zero. So for a spontaneous process, the cell potential is positive. And for a non-spontaneous process in the forward direction, the cell potential is negative. So those are some things that you want to keep in mind. Number two, using the standard reduction potentials shown below, what is delta G of the reaction? So somehow, we need to combine these equations such that it adds up to this one. And we need to get the cell potential for the overall balanced reaction. And then once we have it, we can calculate delta G. So notice that aluminum is on the left side. Here it's on the right. So that indicates that we need to reverse this reaction. And for this one, copper is on the appropriate side. Now we need the number of electrons to be the same. So 2 times 3 is 6. We need to multiply this reaction by 2, and that will give us 2 aluminum, and this one by 3 to get 6 electrons, which will give us 3 copper atoms. So let's reverse this reaction and multiply it by 2. So it's going to be 2Al 
and that turns into 2Al3 plus with six electrons. Now, if you reverse the reaction, the cell potential will change from negative to positive. If you multiply by two, it has no effect on the cell potential. Now this one, we're not going to reverse it, but we're going to multiply it by three. So we're going to have six electrons. And the cell potential will not change. It's going to be positive 0.34 volts. So now let's add up these two reactions. Notice that the electrons will cancel. We have six on the left and six on the right. If you subtract both sides by six, they both disappear. And so this will give us the net reaction. which is what we have here. So now we can get the overall cell potential for the entire reaction by adding these two values. 1.66 plus 0.34 is 2 volts. And we can see that N is equal to 6. So now we can calculate delta G. So the cell potential for the overall reaction is 2 volts, n is 6, and we know that delta G is equal to negative n times Faraday's constant times the cell potential. So we have 6 moles of electrons, and Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons, and the cell potential is 2 volts, or 2 joules per coulomb. And so this will give us delta G in joules. And so delta G is going to be negative 1,157,820 joules. Now let's convert that to kilojoules by dividing it by 1,000. And so this is going to be negative 1157.82 kilojoules. So we can round it and say it's about negative 1160 kilojoules. And so that's the answer. This corresponds to answer choice E. Number three, what is the cell potential of the hypothetical reaction shown below? Now, if you want to try it, go ahead, pause the video. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate n. We already have delta G. And so once we can find the value of n, then we can calculate the cell potential easily. So let's focus on the first half reaction where M4 plus turns into M. And so to balance it, we need four electrons. Now for the second half reaction, we need three electrons. And to make the number of electrons equal, 4 times 3 is 12, we need to multiply this by 3 and this by 4. And so in both cases, we're going to get 12 electrons. So clearly, we can see that n is equal to 12 for this example. So now that we have the value of n, we can calculate the cell potential. Now, before we use the equation, and we need to convert this to joules. So we have 350 kilojoules, and we have to multiply it by 1,000 joules per kilojoule to convert it. So this is the same as negative 350,000 joules. Now we can use this equation. So delta G is negative 350,000 joules. N, we know it's 12. Faraday's constant is 96,485. And let's solve for the cell potential. So all we need to do is divide both sides by negative 12 and 96,485.
So type in negative 350,000 and divide that by negative 12. And then take that result, which is 29,166.7, divide that by 96,485. So you should get positive 0 0.302 volts. And that's the answer. So that's how you can calculate the cell potential if you're given delta G. You need to calculate the number of moles of electrons in a balanced chemical reaction, and then you could use this formula. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.